Today, the ever-growing supermarkets and superstores sell everything. They're selling clothes, they're selling insurance, they're selling pension. You can pick up everything you want in one place. It's convenient, it's just easy. But our love affair with the big boys is killing Britain's small shops. We're sacrificing our greengrocers, our bakers, our high streets, our communities for convenience. We'll miss our neighbourhood shops when they're gone. And I don't want to live in a Britain that bland. I made my name in high-end designer retail. But now I'm heading into a whole new world to work out a survival plan for our local shopkeepers. This week I'm taking on the village shop, a store that should be at the heart of the community. I got a ferret up there, do you? This one's in the hands of a hapless pair of townies. What is that? What is that, honestly? What is that little display? It's more mini mart than country store. You've got to stop playing at this. Really, really, really stop playing shop. The villagers are heading for the hills. At the moment is it's diabolical. I so want to just climb in a hole and stay there. And this village is in danger of losing its shop forever. Effectively, this is a neglected business. I really genuinely don't think he's going to be able to do it. This week I'm in Dorset, famous for its rolling hillsides and fabulous local produce. I love this part of the country. I love it. I come down here every year, twice a year. I'm on my way to the idyllic village of Corfe Castle, a vibrant local community in a chocolate box setting. I've got just one month to save the local village shop. Night on 500 small village shops a year are closing down. Those village shops are the heartbeat, the meeting place for most local villagers, and they're just going, going, going. Why? Why? What is it they're doing so wrong? So wrong. The village shop is owned by townies, ex-IT sales manager Juliet and ex-market trader Chris. They moved from South London two years ago to fulfil their dream of living a country idyll. Came into the village and in my, I don't know if you get a feeling or a reaction, or it was like, oh my God, I want to be here, I want to live here, even before seeing the shop. We wanted to get out of London, we wanted to get out of, you know, the, the sort of rat race, but we wanted to sort of be part of a little community. Being accepted by these country folk is a challenge. Cake is too expensive. Our cakes are expensive. Oh, terrible girl. The wonder the village has gone to park. They've got their ways, some of them, and they let you know that we're doing everything wrong. No, 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 no. Some of the locals, they're odd and unique. The Vicar of Dibley on Acid is, you know, I think that describes most of Cool Castle down to a T. Oh, you look at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> I got a ferret up there, do you? Been told that we'll never be a Dorset person, we'll always be Londoners, we'll never understand Dorset. Chris is trying his best to win the village round. He's open all hours, but to no avail. It gets very demoralising when you're working all these hours, seven days a week. Well, the last time the shop closed was over a year and a half ago, maybe nearly two years, because I opened Christmas Day this year. But for all their efforts, they're losing up to six grand every month. Living in the country could turn out to be the worst move they've ever made. Some people will say when they you know, lose a business, they've still got the house and that our house is tied into it. We'll just have the car. If it doesn't go right, it'll be a car driving back to London with everything we can fit in it, sort of in your forties, and all of a sudden you've got nothing, you've got to start all again. I've got no idea what I'm going to find here. I've never been to Corfe Castle. Morning. This is so charming. It is just so quaint. I hope the village shop is like this. It would be amazing if it was. Everything is just so fantastic here. Corfe Castle doesn't disappoint. It's truly stunning. 
It's just so busy. It's it's vibrant. Everything's traditional. I'm seeing model village and tea room. I've got Enid Blyton with her ginger pop in the corner. I've got the post office. Honestly, if you painted a picture, you couldn't paint better. And there's the village shop. The most gorgeous building, but hideous, dead old palm tree outside. Plastic bin, plastic street cone. In an instant, just dispelled this wonderful, wonderful vision of this village. Morning. Good morning. Hello, How I'm are Mary. You? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet Chris. Chris. Juliet. Hi, Juliet. I'm going to have a wander around, just getting on with your busy morning, and um, ignore me as much as you can. Okay. Not the easiest sometimes, <laughs> but for the moment. I expected a village shop to offer the ultimate inconvenience, somewhere to make life easy. But I just want to run away. I, have, I feel claustrophobic, like, <laughs> the minute I've walked in here, I'm just every message possible. There are more cans and packets on these shelves than there are at any supermarket, but the perishables I might run out of have gone to seed. Wait to see the fr fresh fruit and veg. Which looks nice, doesn't it? Dead chilies and some off bit of pepper. Oh, that is just horrible. I mean, I don't care. That is just the most horrible, horrible thing I've ever seen. Look at that. Ugh. Now, why have I got this? I don't think I've even heard of that makeup range. Is it just filling shelves with tat? Yes. It's a much bigger mess than I ever thought. This is really, really sad. Actually, this is them knowing I'm coming. This is them putting on their best foot forward. What did you do in London before then? Worked for my, with my dad. Okay. Yeah, he had a toys market stall. And... No, I uh, worked for a huge corporate in sales IT. So have you ever run a shop before, either of you? No. This was a whole life change. It was a big, huge gamble for us. Tell me what this shop is. That's the thing. It's a, it's a bit of everything. It's not a supermarket. It's what it still says above the, the door, a general store. It's a 1950s, still in, still in the Arkwright. I could actually write a list of a hundred things that are wrong with this shop. It's so wrong. I mean, the first thing I see when I come in here is, is clutter and mess. Why on earth would you put hosiery next to dog food? Adopted what was already a working format. You don't deserve to make money if you just tell me that you've adopted what someone else did. This just looks like the, just the cheapest bad for me food. Would you, honestly, as a mother, popping in to get maybe something for supper that night, be opening up the freezer to get your chicken tikka? Oh, there we are. I must buy some blue tack or some glue. Would, do you, would you think that that's a natural way to shop? No. No, no it but, isn't. But that's what you're giving them. What is that, honestly? What is that little display? Is that you having a go at a display? Uh, it was just to show that, that we could put a hamper together if need be. Juliet, would you really have a hamper with two half bottles of wine and basil pesto? No. I just feel that everything's done shabbily because none of this is done with great taste. And taste, when you are selling anything, is vital. All we've tried to do is just please every type of customer that comes in. I'm worried about upsetting the, the, the elderly who has peas pottage. I don't even know what it is. We just don't seem to be able to pee, uh, sort of help these people. They're very insular. Why are they insular? What, what is your they thing? don't actually, a lot of people don't actually ever leave this village. They're just so blinkered. You know, I honestly can say we were scared about upsetting the apple car. We're scared of this, we're scared of that. And you just haven't got a vision, you haven't got a plan. Effectively, this is a neglected business points seemed valid, it just seemed very harsh. I thought it was, must have been what the Americans felt like at Pearl Harbor when they looked up and saw waves of aeroplanes coming over and then they thought it was finished and then another one lot come over. So yeah, it was very draining. 
Before I head off home, I want to go out into the village that Chris and Juliet are so afraid of to see what the locals think of their village shop. Do you ever go into the little general store? Over the road? No. Which local shops do you use? Bakers, I've just been in there. It's the Bakers. Do you ever go across to the store across the road, Cleo's? I haven't been in there, no. This tells me something, doesn't it? Because that is meant to be the local village shop, okay. providing everything, and yet nobody seems to be going in it. I need to find out why, so I'm visiting some of the cornerstones of village life. Hello. Hello. How long have you lived here? I've lived in the village all my life, part of the furniture. When did you last use Cleo? 18 months, two years ago. Oh, right, so this is since the new owners? Yeah. What have they changed then? What's changed? They don't stock the average things that we require. What do you think to the couple who own Shields? I mean, do you know them personally? No, I don't. They don't communicate with people, so people aren't going to shop, are they? What would you do if they closed? Would you miss it? In this particular moment, no. Mm. In a small village like this, it's all about word of mouth. And if your shop has a bad reputation, it spreads like wildfire. So I'm off to that other community hub, the pub, to find out more from the locals. Hello. Oh, is that local stuff? What's that? Is that cider? It is? Yes. Dorset's finest. Is it Dorset cider? I've never had a Dorset cider. Can I have a small Dorset cider? Is this your local? Yeah, well, as far as I'm concerned, you see, I don't live very far. Oh, it's not bad for a near one. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right, let me taste it. A cheers. cheers dear a lady. thousand cheers, divine. <laughs> Do you kind of shop locally? I like to shop with local pro products. Yeah. The food that it's, you know, made in Dorset is just phenomenal. So you don't think that your local. Cleels does it well. No, no, you could do it so, so much better. Because at the moment it's, it's diabolical. And the characters, their service, you know, Juliet, what do you think of it? We don't know well, them very they're, well. They're not they're great communicators. And usually when you ask them something, they've either just sold it out or the basics like cream. If you go in the weekends, everybody wants cream because yeah. it's, you know, they're making crumbles and things. And, uh, you know, just sold that. Oh, we just sold that. Oh, we're just out of that. And you kind of wonder whether that is actually true or whether they really don't know seasons, I don't think. This is in Lightning. My final stop is the Village Hotel. Oh, hello, ladies. Oh, hi there. Hi, I'm Mary. All right, hello, I'm Louise. Mary. Hi. Oh, hi. Hello. My name's Lynn. Hello, Lynn. Nice what are you ladies doing? Planning? Uh, planning a coffee morning. When did you last use Cleo? I don't often go in there. Why don't you go in there? Because they don't sell what I w want. But are you saying then, as a villager, you probably don't need a, a, a local convenience store? If they haven't got what people want, then they're not doing yeah. what people want. But do you feel, when you go into the shop, that it feels like part of your community and you know them and they know you? For me, yes. I mean, I know it's different for you. But in a village community, it's your personality. You've got to sell yourself before you can sell whatever. You've got to be prepared to put yourself out. So, the locals don't like the food on offer and they're not buying into Chris or Juliet. I'm not hearing anybody say, I totally rely on that, we need it. I think I have to look at what, in today's market, do these people need and want. There's no doubt that neighbourhood stores have had it rough. The supermarkets have stolen the market on convenience. We spend millions on quick fix food, but the joy of the village shop is that it's there on the customer's doorstep. Get the offer right, and I do think Cleo stands a chance, but I'm not sure about Chris and Juliet. I'm really, really worried because what I've got are two London characters who've never lived in the country never really been part of country life and actually don't understand those consumers. The locals told me they wanted Cleels to offer better quality food. So I'm back in Dorset to put a stop to the stock Juliet's been buying. What's your buying? How much have you spent in buying this year? On goods in, do you know? Um, 
surprisingly, it's it's usually more than we actually take. So, so you've been you've been buying more than more than you're selling. Yes. How much more? I think usually a, a sort of anywhere upwards from a couple of thousand to six thousand pound a month. Juliet, have you lost the plot, love? Honestly, are you mad? How many lines are you buying? It's over four thousand. I'm, I'm not laughing because no, I'm no, just no, like... No, I no, no, I'm astounded too. I'm gobsmacked. I'm gobsmacked. I really am gobsmacked. I feel really upset. I feel really upset for you. Yeah. For two fabulous people who, who can lose their homes. And you've got to stop playing at this. Really, really, really stop playing shop. Yeah, we're in really deep. I can't read you half the time. You're sitting there looking at me like, and I don't know what's in your head, darling. I think I'm trying not to just sort of break down, really. OK. <laughs> OK, you... I think I I'm want... just holding things okay. in and okay. trying to hide things from Chris because he worries about other areas and... And I suppose it's just all come on top. OK. It's tough. I so wanted to just climb in a hole and stay there. But we're fighting every single day, and we may not make the right choices. But but we're fighting. We are trying, we are trying, we... Well, you can't get yourself into any more debt. You've got to be sensible. We've got to be honest. We've got to be open. We've got to deal with things head on. You can't just keep buying like a a mad person that thinks it's going to make themselves better. And I want you to work with me on how we're going to do that. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go out there. And we're going to go through that shop and we're going to look at what you do not need in here. You are a convenient shop. I want to look at what we should have in the shop that are great, good, convenient basics. And we're going to go around that shop and we're going to clear what we don't need. Come on. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Supermarket sweet. Have you got a trolley? <laughs> Where's your... I am. I'm not... You think I'm joking? Where's the trolley? Right, <laughs> that's, that's horrible and tough. And I think that they've had a problem and they've just buried it. And they're in the worst state you could possibly be. So I'm just going to have a bit of fun with them now and get some energy back in and just get some focus. Come on, Chris, get the trolley out. <laughs> Mothballs, who has those anymore? Well, yeah. A village shop should have some essentials, but Chris and Juliet have got the whole set. How many bloody toilet cleaners do I need, all right? We're keeping one premium and one economy line and freeing up space for desirable, convenient food the locals might actually want. Which known brand? Which cheaper brand? Right, we'll get rid of toilet duck, duck, duck and Arizona. And duck off. Change we your mindset. We need to get rid of 500 lines. Fantastic. Yeah. Sliced carrots, whole carrots, and baby carrots. Really, do you need sliced carrots? I mean, even if I had rheumatoid arthritis and I was 96, I could cut up a tin carrot. We thought the more stock you had, the more chance we've got of selling things. We, the more chance we thought someone will come in and find something they want. I'll sleep tonight. I didn't sleep at the weekends, worried about what she said. Now I'm going to know I'm going to sit and relax and think, yeah, we're going to try and turn the corner. And she's given us the first, first direction. Nobody behaves like that in business. I mean, that's kind of basic, fundamental maths. So I think there's a problem that goes a lot deeper. When a shop is reliant on the same locals coming in day after day, you have to work out what they really want. Sounds simple, but Chris and Juliet have really failed to get it right. Today, I've asked them to meet me in London so I can attempt to get them to think like retailers. So you grew up round here, or you worked Yeah, I worked here. We're in East Street Market, somewhere I am sure Chris knows the clientele inside out. This was a very traditional market. It's yes. been going for over 100 years. Uh -huh. uh, Charlie Chapman was born down here. Charlie Chapman yeah. was born down here? Where was your dad still? Dad is uh, just, uh, see on the, the corner there, it's just another 100 yards, and that's where my dad would be. We would say, you know, as advertised on Crime Watch. Yeah. And that was a brilliant selling point. that was point. a selling point. Yeah, all the people were the same. Even it didn't matter if they were black or white. It yeah. doesn't matter what races they were. They came down here for the same purpose, to find a bargain. You tell me five great things about Corf Castle. Tell me things about that area. I love the peace. As you can see, this is hectic now. I've had no, enough. No, no, I want you. Not want you telling yeah. me what you love. I want you telling me about that area. 
Uh, I don't... But you know how I walked down here with you and I said, tell me about here, you were straight away, OK? This is what they bought, this is what the people are like. That's what you need to do in Corf Castle. And it's confusing yeah. you, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. I, we are. I, well, I am. I know I am. I, I, I thought I could just go down there, be my cheeky chappy self, uh, and they'll love me for it and they'll buy whatever I offer. Now I've made my point, we're heading over the river. <laughs> to a shop I love where a man in charge has gone beyond the call of duty to match his stock exactly with the people on his doorstep. Here we are in Camden Passage, OK, in Islington. Now, the thing about London, it's like a series of different individual villages. Now, I've brought you here to this little shop called Paul A. Young, and he's a fine chocolatier. Now, this business might not make money in Corfe Castle, but it makes money here. And the reason it makes money here is he understands what the locals want. He only sells one thing and he makes a fantastic profit doing it. Hello, Paul. Hello, how are you doing? Good, you? Very good, thank you. Paul, can I introduce you to Juliet? Hello. Hi there, nice to meet and you. And Chris. Hi, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. How did you get to understand the locals? The key thing was to get out there. I sat in a chair with a pad and I noted down what people were wearing what bags they had, where were they shopping, and that really makes me understand what they want. We noticed that last year that people were wearing purple and gold, so we put gold leaf on our chocolates. And purple. Pur purple, gold. Well, imagine if you were, you were my customers right now and I'd <laughs> said, try a truffle. Are you just, it feels like we've known each other for, for months, years. That's and you've had this champagne. Stunning. What about yours, Chris? <laughs> it's very quiet. It's very, very nice. I'm not a great chocolate fan, so oh. that's me. It's, that's just my... No. OK, I want you to get outside your shop, OK? I want you to do that. But first, I want you to start here, because this is a place you don't know. So I want you to talk to people, and I want you to find out what they like, OK? And what their chocolate taste is. And when you've done your bit of market research, I want you to create a chocolate flavour. I want you to think of something that really is right for this consumer. Not for you for this consumer. Okay, can I do a pie and mash one? Pie and mash. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be lovely? Oh. So, you know, th this is quite buzzy around here. Right, off you go. Any which way. Excuse me, may I ask you a question? Um, about... Chocolate. <laughs> OK. It's quiet, I'm trying to find some money. Hello, Amy. Oh, you're wonderful. I won't need to ask anyone else. So can I go out on the high street? Or? Go wherever you yeah. want, my darling. Now I'm next to William Hill on the diviest part of the high street. Oh, Chris, I hope she's doing better. That's very interesting. So it's 11 o'clock in the morning. Where would you go to find people who are from around here? Yeah, it's normally pubs, uh, shops. No, no, <laughs> no. no. no, no, no. The yummy mummies. What would yummy they possibly be doing? coffee and things like that. Get yeah. out and find them. <laughs> Jesus, hanging around the pubs. That'd be nice with the kid hanging around the pubs. That's typical, typical mindset. Think about these customers. It's not you. It's not you. It's a different life. And that's what they need to understand. Every, every, everyone I've spoken to seems to be foreign or local. Yes. So yeah. I'm, you know, I'm not, yeah. not enjoying this at all. No. Well, the thing all it's doing is making me feel uncomfortable. Yeah. No, it's a difficult area. What's yeah. the matter? I don't like it. I must admit, I feel uncomfortable. Mm. It's not... Mm. And Why do you feel them. uncomfortable? You're not normally uncomfortable talking. Yeah, unco uncomfortable talking about something I don't understand, possibly. Okay. Um, okay. You know, sort of. I know it's uncomfortable, but we, we have to do it, darling. It really. Yeah, it's no, no, no. But I'm willing to willing to try it. It's just that uh, we're talking about things. I'm. <laughs> I should be passionate, but I'm not passionate about chocolate. I'm not one. Julie's excited about it because she <laughs> eats it. She'll eat it. And... Why are you passionate about food wise? Honestly, honestly, what are you passionate about? I wouldn't say anything. You're not? No, it's no food to me is just a mundane fuel. If you see food as a mundane fuel and you're not passionate about, honestly, Chris, that might be a message that we're putting across to the customers. It doesn't inspire me, but I'm trying to. But Chris, I can't. I can't see what your business can be if you if you don't have a wonderful excitement. Feel the excitement that guy had for the uh, chocolate. Yeah, shop. that was uh, that was incredible. I just uh, always look to my role as, um, you know, sort of just uh, just doing the, the 
the dog's body work. You don't want to be a dog's body. It's what I've been used to, you know, with the market traders. You get up at four o'clock in the morning, you set your stall up. Continue on, let me yeah, think. Yeah, let yeah, me yeah. think. Continue on. No, but that that's seriously worrying. Um, I've, I've got a man here who is a natural shy, sees himself as, you know, the dog's body. So unloading, but actually doesn't give a hoot about food. I, I, I don't know any of the flavours because it doesn't interest me. So uh, hopefully Julie's come out with some great ideas and I'm going to come up with Cadbury's. That's it. That's my, that's my idea, Cadbury's milk cho chocolate. Because that's, that's all I've ever eaten and, uh, you know, I don't know any better. From what I see, I really genuinely don't think he's going to be able to do it. I can't give him a bloke taste overnight and say enjoy food, love it and understand how people and what motivates and inspires them. We are miles and miles apart. At least now I know why the food at Cleels is as sad as it is. We've got a major problem. I want to give the locals what they want. I want to put fresh, fabulous, convenient food at the heart of the business. But that won't work for a shopkeeper who prefers hot noodles to hot pot. But I'm not giving up. We couldn't be in a better location to introduce Chris to the joy of food. Dorset literally oozes fresh produce. And in a last ditch attempt to get through to Chris, I'm back to get him out of the shop and into the wilds of the countryside. Morning. Good morning. Nice and early. You've got to be able to understand the villagers and how actually the seasons really affect what they eat and what they buy. Question, when does the pheasant season start? No idea. October the 1st. OK. These country pursuits are so important to the villagers and the local people. So I'm going to take you out today and live a little bit of country life so that we understand where the food comes from. Today we're going to join a pheasant shoot and I want Chris to enjoy himself. Locally sourced fresh produce is now more popular than ever. And I'd love to see this Dorset bounty in Cleels. Morning guys. You don't mind us hanging with you while you beat? I've arranged for us to join Gamekeeper Brett and the local beaters. What we're going to do is we're going through the, the gap there, lying out at the top of the drive, and then dogs in for the first 20, 30 metres. We're just hand tapping it through. Of course, do I do this every day of my life? No. But the truth is, for them, it has to be part of their life. They have to understand provenance. They have to know where the food comes from, how it's farmed, and how the farmers and those locals live their lives. I, for one, am enjoying this. Why do you flag? Ah, mostly for partridges. Oh. Like you can make them turn towards the Can you? Yeah. Well, how long have you been beating for? 40 years. Why do you do it? Do you love this? I, lo I enjoy it. So come on, advice for these two in the country. What, what, what do you think? Give them a bit of advice. They need it. Uh, Let me tell you, they need it, don't just, they? Just blend in. We're quite nice people, really. Just blend into the countryside. They look blended That's in today, <laughs> don't they? Oh, yeah, oh, it's oh, <laughs> I suppose you've never heard a gun before, it's quite loud, so just be um, No, I've not, not heard a, a gun like that. I've, I've heard a... <laughs> handgun, yeah. Yeah, and the odd mm. shotgun, which has been cut right down, but that's from where oh, I'm from, in South yeah, London, yeah. so... I push the safety catch off. That's it. My heart's racing. Is it? Yeah. You hit the tree anyway. Oh, right. <laughs> um, you've got in the top bit there, you've got some... An hour in and my townies are beginning to relax. I think we're getting somewhere. 
this, this is my sort of thing. This is why I moved down to Dorset. You know, sort of get away from the crowds and that. I could quite easily walk around here for hours, you know, out of the shop. With Chris so enthused, we're off to see what else the country has to offer. Hazelnuts here. Oh. Well done. Well, it's not a pistachio, is it? Um, you've got in the top bit there, you've got some nice slows, uh, which, you, you know, you can make in a beautiful accompaniment to a game pie by just sticking them in, in gin. Now imagine, Chris, if you were selling that game pie in your shop and you actually have been part of the process and understand how it's made and you've foraged and you've found the bits that go with it. It's much more exciting, isn't it, than buying some old supplier turning up at your door? Yeah, maybe this is where I could get interested in food and you know, sort of maybe discover some flavours that I have probably d deliberately missed out on because I'm just so boring when it comes to food. But And if this does excite you, though, you're going to pass that on, yeah. aren't you? Oh, yeah, I, definitely. I, I've, mean, already? I've been buzzing, uh, you know, about, you know, this morning with the shoot and that to uh, imagine to go out and even if just shoot one bird and we've got loads of pies, I can say, well, yeah, but that one... That's me, I've made that. Yeah. I've made it. <laughs> That's me, <laughs> I've made that, and it's a bit more than just humping boxes yeah, all the time. Totally. Isn't it? Oh, so I want to get past that, I've done it all my life. No, you will do. You will do. To me, it's Come been on, the most important, on. important turning point so far. And, but more importantly, to see him genuinely, genuinely motivated and inspired. And I've not seen that at all. At all. So I really have hope. I really genuinely with him. I'm now turning our attention back to the shop. The locals in the main are giving Cleels a wide berth. When we launch in three weeks' time, I want this to be the place they come to when their cupboards run bare. To pull it off, I need to throw Chris in at the deep end. I want you to have a tasting evening and I want you to find for me some lovely local produce local, different and specialist. And that will make this a really lovely special place. And you will find out whether those people love that on your event, do tastings, find out what they like and what it is they want, OK? Invite people in and say, we're starting to really understand what you guys want and we're bringing some local, great Dorset produce in. Tell me what you think of it. I'd love to go round and sort of think that I'm contributing to my own shop instead of just looking at a book of stock and saying bib bib you know that's we'll have that we'll have that so let's go around and source these farmers and um, cheeses and uh, I'd love to get some proper food maybe I'll eat start eating some more and Juliet isn't off the hook when I first met the locals they complained that she and Chris were too distant well, that's about to change. Hello, are you all right? Yes, yeah. thanks. So when was the last time you went out during the day and connected with the village? No, I don't think that's really happened. I found out about a regular bulls event at the British Legion, just the place to tell people about the upcoming tasting event. What I, I want from this is that you start to connect with people in the community, so that you can start to build some links. Listen. It might not be your idea of rock and roll straight away, but they make this village tick and they have big influence. I'll be there in case I get a bit too rough and tough. Eileen, <laughs> <laughs> how are you? Fine, thanks. Have you met Juliet? Hello, Hello. Hello. Juliet from Cleels, Lynn. So I just would be great if you could kind of introduce Juliet to some people. If you could... She probably knows just as many people as <laughs> Really? You, you've been 20 years in the village? No, I, and you I, know, some, as many. I know some faces, but not certainly there's lots here I don't know. I'm going to kind of leave you a bit. Sure. Just talk with them. Honestly, I know it's difficult when you go no, to a crowd no, no, like I this. Can definitely. And as we've already seen, she knows as many people as I do. Yeah. What would you like to um, drink? So, oh, oh that's you. really sweet of you. Yeah, Thank you. Let's go. I'm what have you got? You. Beer. Oh, I'll have one of those then. Half a bit of. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> when in Rome. This is Juliet's big chance to warm up the locals. Yeah, she does look awkward and she feels awkward. This isn't natural to her, but she's going to have to make it natural. This is her chance to talk about her shop, PR and market it. The, the, the nearest one, 
you might get, in theory, you could get six nearest, couldn't you? If you could all say six, but it doesn't really work like that. Sure. What a way. <laughs> this is painful for everyone. Find out what uh, yeah. people want. Yeah. Oh, well. And a lot of people in villages do talk nonsense. I've, I've made the situation for her, but she's not making the most of it. I hear her saying to people, I've been told to come in. God, that helps you straight away. I mean, the first thing you should say is, God, I didn't know this happened. This is fantastic. How often do you meet? The thing is, it is this word of mouth thing. And if you get it wrong in a local community like this and they don't like you, it spreads like wildfire. Yeah. I'm just a bit disappointed that you haven't found out more. I wanted you to really get in there. Perhaps I didn't understand fully what the... What, what I was meant to be doing, but I, I have broached certain areas. I was expecting more enthusiasm. After fleeing her stressful London sales job, this was supposed to be Juliet's dream. Every time that I come in, I just get this lovely, smiling little face. But underneath, I don't know you, and I don't know whether you love this. It just didn't turn out what I thought it would be. And it is just so it's so hard and yeah, it's just disappointment. And I suppose it just sort of eats away at you. I know you've had tough times and I'm not here at all no, I know to that. bash you, my love. I really, really don't but I think I think it's now time for you to stop hiding and I think the most important thing for you to do is to is to to push against this and come out and really, really be active in the village. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's too much at stake. And it's not just like the business side of it, it's our relationship and our marriage. I just hope Juliet means what she says. A few days later and I'm back for the tasting event. I've left Chris to it and now I'm feeling rather nervous. My biggest worry is, and it is a worry, is whether they can deliver the vision, whether Chris and Juliet really have the taste level to deliver the vision of the shop that I want. I'm praying I'll see something local and tasty to impress the villagers. I'm nervous, stressed, but, you know, looking forward to it. I'm hoping she'll like what we've done today. Hi guys. Oh, the... Hello. Hello. Hi. These your helpers. Uh, well, yeah, these are all the little uh, the producers and that we've got invited in. Good morning. Good morning. This looks lovely out here. See this taste level. That is what is the benchmark for what we're going to do, darling, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. Chris has done well, but does he like what he's offering? What's that? I haven't tried it yet, but Try it. Tastes like there we go, pork. Pork tenderloin. You need to sell that. What's this? This is the local cheeses. Chris, taste it. Love it. This is your future, Chris. This I'm... is the future, darling. But with the villagers arriving, it's too late for Chris. Yeah, so the cream, cream sheep. Yeah. He's going to have to wing it. Right, sell this, sell this. I know I'm going around this way. John Holes, um, sausages. I'll try the sausage, thank you very much. Sausage, thank you. I'm so pleased to see Juliet throwing herself into this event. This is the cedar organic lamb with pesto. Who's lamb? Where does it come from? Cedar organic, down at Brentstone. Right. Have you had some of the wine? We've got, we've got lime bay wine up there, so we've got to... That's a sausage, it's a plain sausage, but from John Hull, it's a very good pork sausage. The new local products are going down well. Even tough nuts like Lynn are here. Yes, well, I think, I think this is absolutely brilliant. Absolutely. What flavour would you like? Not elderflower, because I know it. Would you like to try nettle, That's then? That's really nice. This is just a tasting, and we're heaving. Because nothing happens here. Can you imagine if something did happen in that shop regularly? It's not that difficult. And then my day really takes a turn for the better. You make cakes? I'm cake and jam maker in the cottage industry. Are you? What cakes do you make? 
I meet Corf Council's answer to Mr. Kipling. Caught a chili and lemon and a traditional dozen that will get all for sale tomorrow. And where are you selling the cake? Uh, on Wednesday is what I do. Is I make the tea and coffee for the knitting knitters, and that's the Corf Castle Ladies' Wool Workshop. How many can you make? Uh, how many do you want me to make? And I'll give it a go. I'm loving you. What's your name? Richard. Richard, Mary. Hi, we are. Mary. We might do a bit of business. Can I get your contact details? Yeah, sure. Will you leave them at the desk, and then I will pick them up afterwards? That is a gift. That is a gift. That guy with the hat and the teeth is a gift. It's a brand in itself. I could take him to London. We'd make a fortune. And I have not dressed him up. Let me tell you, that has been walking the streets of Corf Carpool. I'm sensing the time is right to build on this buzz and get the locals behind my idea for turning around their village shop. Ladies and gentlemen, can you move down here a minute? Can I have your ears if I don't fall through this crate? Thank you very much for coming to Cleal's Tasting this afternoon. This will be the first of many, I can assure you. This is your local shop. This is your local village shop. Richard, turn your phone off and we'll start that one again. <laughs> He's in his bag. Is that a cake order, Richard? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Anne. Have Hi. you got that? Have you got that? We're having a bit of a do down the shop. <laughs> There's free beer and free free eats and free all sorts and a lovely lady making a speech who's on the telly. Yes, Richard, it's free today, but it won't be free from now on in. You'll pay for it tomorrow. So we will be, over the next few weeks, creating a shop that has a mix of fabulous local produce, that has a mix of great basics, and that has a couple of people who want to be part of the village life part of your community and actually feel that they are delivering something good to all of you. Are we agreed? Yeah. This will push us forward more and more. I've seen the type of people who are in the village. I only ever see them when they come in and buy us some toilet roll or uh, uh, some sugar. But having just this little two hours here has been... I've seen that they want more. I'm really enjoying today. Uh, I don't want to be serving behind the counter and lugging boxes. I, I call myself the dog's body. Mm. Let's change that to chief fire. I don't know. I see this is the way forward. So now we know that the locals were dying for somewhere to buy local and lovely food for their larders, I now need to deliver what I've promised. I think we've got no choice but to close down and start all over again. What do you see? I was nothing inspiring. You'd really, I, you could turn around and walk out again. It's, yeah. it's, it, it's just, well, it's a lot of mess, isn't it? It's, it's like too much. It's, it's overwhelming. Yeah, it's not a country shop. Chris and Juliet can now see what I saw the first time I walked in, and I'm itching to turn this dump into something special. So what we're going to do is clear this out, open up these windows so you get the light in here, seasonal fruit and veg in the middle here, and then putting a big deli counter over there, OK? okay? I want to redesign the shop into departments to help focus Juliet and Chris. I think there's what we call great basics, OK? The most simple stuff to, you know, get through life. I can pop into you for bin liners if I need those, cleaning materials. I can pop into you for some cheese if I need that. It's all the things that are the fundamentals that you need. Then I want Chris to focus on finding good convenient food that will be unique to the shop. I love this idea of country convenience. You get people that will make ready meals to go, but they're freshly produced. They'll look in the refrigerator and they'll see that local sourced product as opposed to, you know, cheesy chips. I don't believe that the supermarkets can do that. They can't tap into the country. That's your business, Cleal's Country Convenience. Work starts now. I want to reopen in a week. There's a lot going on, very daunting, but we're going to do it. It's, she's given us the opportunity, so we've got to take it with both hands. I feel like a kid at Christmas, you know, sort of like just opening me present. Chris is going to be a busy boy. I want him to source our new line in country convenient food. Realising that there is some great, great 
places around that I can go and see and hopefully meet you know, some uh, farmers, producers of whatever, whatever there is. There's so much great local food out there. And it's about time our shop started supplying it. I've learned that I've got to, got to sort of take time to, to try and take the business forward. I need to make it work. So let's start again and start with all the enthusiasm I had when we first, first started. I feel excited about the opening too, but I think putting Cleels back at the heart of this village will take more than new stock and a new look. When I first arrived, the villagers told me they expected their local shopkeepers to be part of the community. I know Chris and Juliet want that too, and so I'm going to help them on their way. I thought it would be fantastic if both of you really knew about this place. So I want you to run a pub quiz tomorrow night on Corf Castle. And I want that just to be the starter for you really learning about this place. So I'm taking them to their neighbours, local history buffs Ivan and Barbara, to research the questions. Well, I'm good. Remember we met before I'm married. Hello, Hello Barbara. How are you? Where are you, Ivan? Are you in any of those? That is, that's the square. Yeah. So that's the National Trust shop now, that's isn't right. it? That's right. Yeah, it is. There's the sweet shop there. Yeah. Yeah. Any pictures of Cleels? Anything of the there's, shop? There's no pictures of Cleels. There is a picture of Miss Cleel. Uh, is that the lady who used to put the little dog on the, yes. on the yeah. counter? Yeah. 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 The the yeah. Pug. Yeah. Yeah. A little pug, yeah. I've been told about that. This is going to be their life from yeah. now on in. This is where they're going to live. This is not just about the shop that they go into and sell from. This is their home. And they should know about that and become the future locals. Some of the old chaps, you wouldn't have known what they were saying years ago, would no. you? Because they were... And that... Well, I, I find that Broad. still Broad. even with some of the farmers. <laughs> It's quiz night. Are you ready? Are you ready, oh, quiz ready. master? Not a problem. I love him. He does go for it. Good on you. This is Chris and Juliet's chance to win over the villagers, but they have to put on a good show. Cheers. Cheers. Good luck. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you. You need to convert these lovely people and show them that you have knowledge. You are a local, right? And then they'll come to you. <laughs> I'm going to sit down. Right, Ivan, am I sitting with you? I'm nervous, but I'm a market trader. I'm used to talking to all the sort of people. I'm not doing quizzes, mind you. Well, the Cleels pub quiz is certainly popular. Even my old friend Lynn has turned up. Right, gents, can I please ask you the name of your team tonight? Yes, the Vauxhall Cavaliers. The Vauxhall Cavaliers. Hello, ladies. Corf Crumpets. Corf Crumpets? Yes. <laughs> Hello, darling. Hello, darling. Get you all togged up. And you got a team tonight? No, I got a team tonight, darling. Oh, yeah, should we make a team? You got, you'd have to answer on my behalf. Right, so you're on Mary so you're going to have to think of a very good name. Name for our team. I know what we can call ourselves. Richard. Yes, darling. What should we be called? Can I call ourselves what I was The Darlings, the Darlings! <laughs> Lynn, you're going to join the Darlings team, our team. Lynn and her husband, yeah? Yep, right. Come on. We are going to work some butt here. Yeah. Now, first of all, I'd like to say, yeah. I've heard there's a lot of swatting been going on about, you know, sort of this. You haven't swatted the right things. Uh, is, uh, honestly, um, it's not about the castle. It's about things that we should have learned. And, you know, so we've been stuck in that shop for so long that now it's about time we learn about the village and what was going on. The first question, how many grocer's shops were there once in the village? in 1930. Because Come on, darling lovey. <laughs> All right, darling lovey. Let me just travel back in time a little. Who opened the Abbott's Cottages in 1977? Oh, yeah. There is something supposedly buried in this village very valuable. What is it? Oh, you know it. The Holy Grail. Oh, you think it's a damn brown bloody novel, don't How you? How many water pumps in the village? Two 
Chris is a trooper. Every challenge I've given to Chris, he goes for. And he goes for wholeheartedly. And I actually find that so warming. And the thing is, the villagers will see that. There's people in here who I don't know. And I hope I will really get to know them. They're all so friendly. But I haven't experienced it. Because all I've seen is the inside of my shop. The, the, the winners and I'm really pleased they won, <laughs> was the Corf Crumpets. Yeah! So I'd just like to thank everyone for coming. This has been quite an experience for me. We've been the strangers of the village. Now's the time to get involved in it with all of you. And I really hope you're going to get involved with Cleals, and I really hope that we can be a shop that you'll be proud of. It's such a wonderful village. I really, really hope that you will support us and we will try and support you as a village. So thank you really, very much for coming down. It's great. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, uh, that was more than a success. I really genuinely felt there was a, a real passion coming from Chris. Honestly, it was from his heart. And you know, no one can knock that. No one can knock that. And I genuinely felt the whole village was there for him. A few days later and it's finally time for the Cleals reopening. It's been a month since I started with Chris and Juliet and we've made some real progress. I have great expectations. Flip it, I've still got the builders in there. Oh my god, we're opening in two and a half hours. Just don't see how that's going to be ready. I just do not see how that shop is going to be ready. Whoa! Well, we've got a bit to go. Uh, uh, sorry, can I... Well, what, what's happened? Is it handed over late? I think it's just things were just taking longer than was uh, estimated. Well, we've got to get it open. You know, this isn't a joke. This isn't a joke. This is meant to be our big launch. This is, like, three days behind. It's not going to be ready. We've got no chills, we've got no CCTV, there's no shelving, it's not connected to the wall. Nothing's done. Time for a bit of crisis control. If anybody's without a job, you just go straight away to Chris and say, I'm without a job. Don't stand around looking like halfwits. Because we have got to get this over. Oh, thank you. We can get any more of the locals in. We put a call out for help, and thankfully, the villagers are happy to muck in. How are you, my darling? Don't I like it when the locals come in and help in? Isn't that nice? Shelves are up and now we can put out all of Chris's fantastic finds. Country convenience at its best. The locals have been really great. We're hoping that it's going to come together for the opening and then we'll, 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 we'll do it. Thanks for helping out. Brilliant. Oh, trying, but... No, good for you. Looks good, doesn't it? Yes, it's going to be all right, eventually. We're a good few hours later than planned, but I think we're just about ready to open up. So I need you two. Nice shirt and apron, we're ready to roll. We've got a few minutes and doors are opening. We've managed to transform Cleals from a crammed, bad taste mini market into an airy village shop. With essentials at the back and that sumptuous local convenient food at the front. Time to let the locals in. Is everybody in their places? Wait, I need Julia and Chris. Yeah. Don't they look lovely? Oh, yeah. The Cleals of Corf is now open. Yeah. <laughs> Come on in, ladies. Welcome. Welcome. Hello, Ivan. Hello, nice to see you. I'm Julia. Lovely, Do you like that? I like it, yes. We've got some special treats in store. Local cake maker extraordinaire has launched his own line for the opening. 
do you reckon, Richard? Oh, hello, darling. How are you? What do you think to your cake? We've created a coffee and meeting space in the old storeroom to encourage locals to make this shop their own. I think it's fantastic. It's a complete change around. Huge improvement. Absolutely amazing. Thankfully, the great local products that Chris has carefully sourced are creating a real buzz, just as I'd hoped. They stopped the cereal. They stopped the pies. I shall be here shopping till I drop. I think I've, I've sort of got to know them the last couple of days, and one wants to support them and hope they do well. We've just got a really beautiful shop that I look at, and if I was passing on the road, I'd think, I want to go in there. Did you not touch me? It felt like a whole village had come together to support you who are genuinely now part of the village. Don't you feel well, that? Well, this week we've had so many people coming in offering to help and who we didn't even know. Good luck with it and enjoy it. Remember, remember, it's down to you to keep picking the right produce. Really have this wonderful community village shop. It's been Thank lovely you. being with you. All right, Thank and you. well done. That was a big journey. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was one big journey. Yeah. Give us a hug. Exhausted, exhilarated, happy, everything. I mean, it's just a mixed emotion at the moment. It's been a day to remember. People coming in and just saying, can I help, can I help? And that we haven't experienced before. I am just know tomorrow I'm going to get up and can enjoy looking around my shop and talking to people about it, about our new product. Is there any particular one you like? But Chris has just come to life and he seems to be very proud of himself and he should be. I know tomorrow, even though it's a lot of hard work for the next few weeks, I'm looking forward to doing it. We've got more passion for it now. When I took this shop on, it could have been any local urban shop in any part of any city. And my goal was to really create what was out here. Corfe Castle, a shop that really reflected all that Corfe Castle was about. I really believe that shop does that. And it looks fantastic. And I'm happy. I saw rescuing the village shop as saving part of our heritage, and it's one of the most special independents. But after all the excitement of that launch day, have I found a way for Cleels to survive alongside the supermarkets? We're getting more people in now. We're getting more, um, some of the locals that never visited the, the shop before because of our local produce. They're coming in again and again, seeing what, seeing what meats we do and the, the, the pies. We are far, far more integrated and we've reached people that perhaps we wouldn't have reached before. I'm not hiding. I've, uh, I've certainly put myself out there a little bit more. I definitely feel like a new man. I've got more, something more about me, more oomph about me. Um, it's not just getting up and being the dog's body all day. I'm really looking forward to the future. Here comes the sun, little darling. Here comes the sun. Mary Queen of Shops is back next Monday at 9. Next tonight on BBC Two, the latest World Cup action, including the title holders Italy against Paraguay in Match of the Day. Here comes the sun, little darling. Here comes the sun.